亦都救人。Members, we have reached the appointed hour, and we have a quorum. Agenda item number one, confirmation minutes. At the 15th of October 2015 meeting, and the minutes have been sent to members. The Secretary has not received any proposal for amendment. So shall we confirm the minutes? Okay, if there is no objection. Item two, papers issued since last meeting. Since the last meeting, the Secretary has issued five papers. The details are also on the uh, revived agenda. Mr. Wong Yong Man on the 21st of September wrote to this panel uh, gave his view on the promotion of digital voice broadcasting, asked for inclusion of the item on the agenda. The administration has given a reply to Mr. Wong, and the reply has been given to members um, for reference. If there is no further objection, then let's move on. Shall we discuss uh, DAB, a digital voice or digital audio broadcasting? Now you have uh, seen the written reply. Now, having read the uh, written reply, do you think it's necessary to put it on the agenda? Yes, indeed, Mr. Chairman, several companies are involved. And Phoenix. Uh, I really can't say, uh, speak his name. It's quite a mouthful. Okay, the reply is just tabled this morning. Well, please read uh, that, and if you feel that this should be included, then I uh, will talk to the administration and add it on, uh, into the agenda. Ms. Claudia Mo. Sorry, speaker's not coming through. Mr. Wong, your man's not here. Now, Chairman, I've read the reply. I still think we sh uh, can discuss it. It's about the uh, freedom of information and about choice for the people of Hong Kong. Okay. Um, shall we uh, talk to the administration on when we can put that on the agenda? Okay, let us move on to the next meeting. Our uh, December regular meeting is on the 14th of December at 2.30 in this room. The administration um, has suggested the following. A, better utilization of eight-digit numbering plan. This is item one on the list of outstanding items. Uh, that's a, an issue of common concern. On the 20th of November, the government will be able to set up the ITB, and we want to invite the representatives to the new bureau uh, to give us a brief on the work. Uh, so uh, the, the bureau will be invited uh, for a briefing. Yes, so be it. Item 4. Capital Works Reserve Fund, Head 710, Computerization, Subhead A007GX, Block Allocation, New Administrative Computer Systems. Uh, shall we invite the officials into the room? Uh, may I welcome uh, the representatives of the OGCIO for attending the meeting? Yes, please take your seats. So who would uh, give an introduction? Yes, um, the uh, secretary. Yes, chairman, every year we apply to the AFC so as to implement uh, Capital Works Reserve Fund Head 710, com 710 computerization um, to promote the use of computer. The estimated cash flow to pay for the approved projects and also the proposal by the bureaus and departments. We propose a total allocation of $99 million, an increase of $50 million over the current budget, which is about 5.3%. The increase is to uh, pay for com the use of IT in the departments and bureaus, and also the provision of e-government service and also the expansion and use of information technology so as to enhance efficiency and upgrade hardware, software, and enhance information security. In response to members' views, in Annex C, we have listed uh, the 150 proposals on the Internet, and also the uh, um, achievements of uh, implementing uh, IT. And it's also in paragraph 5. We hope uh, members will support the funding so that the bureaus and departments can implement uh, their the task on uh, IT. Any questions from members? 
Mr. Charles Mock. Um, uh, five minutes um, in, uh, questions and answers included. If I may thank the officials coming and uh, speak to us on the um, initiatives under Head 710. Every year, there are increases to funding. It's not the result of price increases. It's because of increase in workload and items to be updated have also increased. You have listed the items uh, 150 odd to be implemented by the bureaus and departments. And now you've told us the items and also the budget. The overall increase is 5.3%. But in terms of manpower, what will be the change? So in terms of headcount, will there be any change? Whether they're civil service posts or contract posts, in terms of headcount, will there be an increase? Um, say in terms of contracting out, uh, or in terms of awarding contracts, um, there will be more employment, but you also need civil servants to do the management and coordination. With regard to uh, ITMU, uh, ITMU, some are very big, some are just small, say five or six members in the team. Say concerning the first department, I, I, I will not go over each department, say for AFCD. The ITMU has only six persons. It uh, does have new projects uh, with a budget of several millions. And so um, it's not just six people doing all the work. Can you tell us what is the actual arrangement? And in relation to uh, the departments, how are they going to deal with these uh, new items? The OGCIO. Um, Chairman, the uh, departments submit to the OGCIO to do the coordination. We are now at the planning stage. Each item uh, has to be uh, provided with details before the OGCIO will uh, vet whether uh, in terms of the systems, in terms of manpower, in terms of delivery standards, um, the OGCIO will vet uh, the details. And then the manpower and also the amount will be finalized then. It's too early to say what is the manpower implication. On the whole, since the uh, budget has increased, we do expect that there will be a commensurate, um, that there will be increase um, proportional to the um, amount. I think the question is not about this head. And concerning the items, I do feel the need. For those items, my concern is about management. How do you go about it? If you look at the ITMU, some uh, have just a few hands. Say, for example, labor department, eight items or eight projects. And some are quite big, more than $10 million. But the size of the ITMU is just nine bodies. So is management adequate, and they can get a contractor to help them to work on the uh, million dollar projects. But in terms of management, will the um, resources be spread out thin on the ground? So uh, then that's my concern. According to previous numbers from 2009 till 2015, in the civil service, the number of posts increased from 700 odd to 900 odd in the IT field. 
these IT officers uh, in the civil service are responsible for management and also part of the implementation. In each department, according to the, uh, their needs, they will increase their civil service establishment. And if need be, they can also increase uh, the manpower of the uh, non-civil service establishment. Uh, Ms. Chiang, I've noticed that there are more than a hundred projects concerning the um, departments. They have to do their own work, and then how do they coordinate? Say do they uh, do vetting? Uh, I mean, the OGCIO do they do the vetting? or do they make suggestion, or do they involve in the development? Uh, the uh, GCIO, generally speaking, we ask the departments to give us specific proposals. The OGCIO has dedicated staff to scrutinize uh, the plan on implementation, on um, um, supervising the projects. Uh, ours is a coordinating department and a supporting department. We help other bureaus and departments to get their jobs done. So in three areas, we help in terms of uh, coordination, uh, cooperation, and exchange. Uh, any further questions for Ms. Chang? Well, you look at the plans for them. As for upgrading, uh, development, and fees, uh, they will be uh, borne by the relevant departments. Yes, you're correct. Now, there are more than 100 items, but the um, uh, um, electoral registration in electoral office is not included. Is it? Uh, does it come under your purview in terms of giving advice? As for the REO, it is a government department. It can propose necessary items. As for the REO, um, it is now embarking on many projects. Now, um, with upcoming elections, the projects will be launched. A project may take one year or even two or three years. So uh, they already have ongoing items. As for new items, um, there is none for the REO. Uh, but um, they are actually working on substantive items uh, to deal with the elections. Uh, Chairman, if I may have one more question. Just now, uh, there are problems with the REO, including the input of information, and the information of several thousand households were wrong. And Many uh, people made uh, suggestions whether voting can be done through the computer. Uh, that will save a lot of manpower. And that may also enhance accuracy. Will you uh, make such a suggestion to them, uh, the OGCIO? Uh, Mr. Secretary. Well, we will uh, refer the this suggestion to our colleagues' concern. But one point I'd like to make is that this proposal is about how the CMAB should, you know, conduct elections. Uh, so I will therefore d refer the question, your proposal not to the IAEA but to the CMAB. No, not not quite. Of course, it is their decision. Obviously, it would be the decision for the department. But still, you have more professionals on your team. I'm suggesting that you should, you know, show more concern and give them more suggestions and ask whether or not they, they need your assistance. Because if you don't ask them, they will not tell you they need assistance because they have their own technical staff 
But the question is that the 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 function of the OGCIO is that you you play a coordinating a central coordinating role. Uh, as far as IT is concerned, I think you should be more you should more proactively you know be concerned about the projects of the the other departments. We'll be happy to do that, Mr. Tam Yu Chung. Uh, in paragraph five of the paper, I note that there is a table, you know, which gives us the number of projects uh, <clears throat> uh, which have been uh, completed, and there are some projects for which targets have been achieved. Item three, you have, you know, eight, eighty, eighty-eight percent of eighty-eight targets uh, achieved and fifty-four not achieved, and the percentage achieved is sixty-two percent. The reason for not completing on target is because these departments uh, don't have enough manpower, etc., etc. So I'd like to know more about this. If the departments say that they do not have enough manpower. Of course, when you sign contracts for these uh, projects, there would be a completion date. And if the completion date could not be met, would there be any penalties? And also, very often, uh, when you you know uh, tender for invite tenders for the projects, the lowest bid would win. But sometimes the department may, you know, you know. Select a larger, uh, you know, uh, contractor. So for sometimes uh, they're not able to complete the target or the, the project on time. So how can we improve on that? Well, actually, there will be a penalty if the contractor cannot, you know, uh, honor the commitments and cannot achieve the target. There would be uh, penalties. Of course, we will not, you know, impose penalties right at the beginning. We will closely monitor the progress of the project, and when we see any uh, possibilities of delay, we will ask the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, department concern how they can catch up. And after several reminders and discussions, if they still cannot meet the target, then there will be penalties imposed. And that is the 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 system that we are, you know, uh, operating at the moment. Regarding tenders and how a contractor can bid for a contract, normally there are two parts to a contract. First of all, whether the contractor will satisfy the technical you know, requirements before we would consider the 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 the, uh, the price quoted if the contractor does not even satisfy the technical requirements we will not even open the second envelope so the they must pass the first test before we will open the second envelope and 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 see whether or not the price quoted is competitive but what how can we improve on that situation would it be possible that the delay is caused by the fact that you make changes frequently, uh, you know, uh, as we as the uh, project is ongoing. For those projects which are not able to meet the target, we would uh, try to find the reasons, and generally, we there might be arguments over the details of the project. And the user department may have uh, uh, written down something in the specifications, and the contractor may not be able to <coughs> fully deliver, and there might be arguments resulting in delays. If the specifications could be written more, more specifically, and if there could be good communication at the outset. Then the possibility of delay could be uh, reduced, and secondly, the contractor may have changes in its uh, uh, personnel, and certain tasks originally, you know, performed by A could be, you know, taken over by B, and that might result in uh, in delays. And the contractors may need to do better in terms of uh, project management. So these are the two. Areas where we could make you know make uh, uh, improvements. 
Deputy CIO, in 2010, we uh, published some guidelines re resulting the implementation of IT projects which have been outsourced. In fact, in 2010, after we published the guidelines, the number of targets completed on time has actually increased. Originally, it was 52.6%. Now, it's up to 62.2%. Of course, we will not be complacent. We believe that there is still room for improvement. We will continue to monitor the departments and ensure that they will implement our guidelines and that the projects and that more projects could be completed on time. Follow up, Chairman, if I may. You may go for your second round. M. Lilau, Chairman, Madam Chair. I would like to ask a question about the uh, user-friendly electronic services, especially the LCSD. Uh, people have been complaining that when people book for the facilities to play ball games, uh, they found that the venues have been monopolized uh, and the public will not be able to book those facilities. And secondly, the ticketing arrangements for concerts. It's very inconvenient. Many people uh, have complained as to why there could be cannot be improvements. Uh, so could the CIO tell us whether or not all those problems have been rectified? Recently, uh, the Hong Kong versus China soccer match. I think people have been complaining about the arrangement. Uh, the football club uh, uh, asked people to queue up at the ticketing office. Uh, the public was asked to buy tickets online, and they couldn't buy the tickets. Uh, so uh, perhaps the LCSD can help answer that question. Thank you. Well, the LCSD this year had uh, a new project to help uh, uh, enhance the uh, function uh, of the uh, leisure link to ensure that it will run more smoothly and that nobody would monopolize the venues. Uh, that is the purpose of leisure link. And I believe that after this project is implemented, the situation should improve. As for the booking of facilities or venues or This may not be the direct responsibility of the LCSD. Sometimes uh, the the task is uh, performed by you know private you know uh, you know ticketing uh, agents. Uh, whoever is responsible, I think it is important that the service should be smooth. So could you help the LCSD and also how, ask the L LCSD to work? better with the uh, co contractors. Uh, two years ago, uh, the Asian game was held in Hong Kong, and very few people attended the the, the programs, and uh, people have to walk a long distance to buy tickets and so on, and it wasn't a, uh, there wasn't a good turnout. So Hong Kong seems to be very, very backward. When I talk to people about the West Kowloon Cultural uh, District people, we're going to sell many tickets and, and so on. So I think we need to talk to the LCSD uh, to ensure that they can do a better job. Is it really so difficult to do a better job? Can you help them? Could Isaiah tell us, you say, to enhance the uh, leisure link so that you can overcome the problem of, people, of, of the venues being monopolized? And the government now sells so many tickets. They're not directly sold by a government department, but they are. Uh, but the events take place at government venues. Thank you. Regarding the enhancement of the leisure link, uh, the LCSD. Uh, this is a project proposed by the LCSD. The purpose of this project is that when a member of public wants to book facilities online. Uh, the leisure link will ensure that the venues will not be monopolized by others. Uh, as to the specific details as to how they can prevent the monopolization of such venues, of course, uh, when they work on this project, they will have a detailed design to ensure that when the uh, facility is launched, uh, they can prevent the people monopolizing the venues. 
as to how we can coordinate better with the LCST so that in terms of uh, you know the booking of facilities they can do a better job we certainly can come talk to the LCST the LCST also has an ITMU we can certainly have exchanges with them to see how we can ensure that the system can run more smoothly chairman having heard this i don't have any confidence well the LCST has the request that you can, you know, you know, that they want you to build a system to help them. We know that already. What I want to do is how the uh, uh, the OGCL can can help them. Is it a case that you don't know whether it will work or not? And if so, please don't help the LC LCSD. Well, the LCSD already has a team, which has been deployed there by the OGCIO, there's about a dozen of our staff with, who will be responsible for, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, enhancing the LCSD, operating the LCSD uh, IT system. They, in our office, of course, our office, of course, if need be, will also coordinate with them. For example, we do have electronic services which are interdepartmental, and I think those can be implemented more smoothly. Chairman, I don't think you have answered Ms. Lau's question. How can you prevent or tackle the problem of venues being, you know, monopolized and ticket scalping? Madam Secretary, we will try the best to provide the information we have on hand. Now, if I may have also answer Ms. Lau's question, that is, there might be, uh, you know, you know, you know, uh, uh, agents which could be selling tickets, and they're not government department. So, how can we work with them better? Uh, it's not an easy task. So, do we, for example, could we share a common platform and work together? I think this is something that deserves to be explored. When we are a smart city, uh, I think we need to have such uh, services which are, you know, uh, which will actually uh, uh, work on joint platform. Well, Chair, Madam Chair, we can ask them to, uh, we can ask the new secretary, well, Chen Chichin. Madam Chair, my question today is about, uh, you know, confidential email system, but the budget. Uh, proposed by different departments vary a lot, uh, from several hundred thousand to several tens of millions of dollar. Is it is the discrepancy in price due to the to the uh, to the complexity of the system or the number of uh, uh, recipients? Uh, for the marine department, it's not a confidential email system. It's five point seven billion dollar just for an ordinary email system. For the confidential email system for the SR government, what is the progress so far? Is it that all departments already have this confidential email system, or is it the case that uh, some departments don't have it? Uh, the police, for example, do they already have it? I think all government departments should have such a system. If some departments have such a system and others do not do, then then how do we, uh, you know, resolve this anomaly? To answer Mr. Chen's question, different departments, uh, for different departments, the establishment, the size of the establishment is different. They have different <coughs> email uh, addresses, so the cost of the upgrade will be different for different departments. Furthermore, this is only an estimate. Once they have put it, once they submit a detailed application, we will look at the proposed fees or costs and see whether they are reasonable. The upgrading of the confidential email system has just begun, and different departments have already completed the project. But there are many other projects which are in a pipeline, waiting for the system to be upgraded. We expect that by mid-2017, all government departments would have completed the upgrade. The um, old system uh, can be converted into the new system. There can be good uh, interface. There is uh, good interfacing. I hope they can provide supplementary information. Otherwise, I will ask at the FC meeting concerning the departments which have upgraded 
the uh, confidential email system, and why some departments just raise or enhance their email system but do not need to enhance the uh, confidential email system. As for mobile apps, some uh, queried uh, the usage rate, the low usage rate of the mobile apps of the administration. They have not been used widely, and uh, targets have not been achieved. I've looked at this, uh, these hundred or uh, hundred or so projects concerning the student financial uh, services. Uh, there is a mobile app of one point nine with budget one point nine million dollars. Other departments seem not to have this. So, um, is the administration or other departments going to develop mobile apps? And if they need to develop mobile apps, they have to go through the present process. They have to give you. Uh, their proposal one year in advance, and then they have to get funding, or they just come up with an idea of mobile app, and then they can get internal resources to deal with that. Maybe the um, the deputy uh, commissioner can answer the question first, and then I will answer the uh, second. We can provide details on the confidential email system. If you see the term email system, that may also include or that may not include the confidential email system. One has to look at the uh, detailed report. As for mobile apps, many departments have already launched their mobile apps. We have guidelines for the departments with regard to launching mobile apps. Um, they launch mobile apps for different target groups. Some target groups may be very big, for example, those of the observatory, uh, which um, is widely downloaded, but with those with smaller uh, audience, such as the uh, AFCD, uh, they will have less downloads. So it depends really on the target groups, the size of the target groups. The most important thing is the mobile apps are launched according to their objectives. As for this head, under this head, uh, there are less proposals for mobile apps, probably because many departments already launched uh, mobile apps. Now there are many system upgrades. But there is no um, mentioning of using cloud technology. There's already got the administration has already got a cloud center. Why the departments do not consider using cloud technology? Many uh, firms have uh, issued reports that using cloud system, thereby consolidating various systems, will save a lot of operating costs. With regard to the um, computer system upgrading, has the administration considered asking departments to consider the application of cloud technology so as to enhance efficiency and reduce cost? Thank you. There are three directions in respect of. Uh, cloud technology. The first is to make use of a central database or central data center. The other is the Gov Cloud. And the um, third is public service. Uh, the majority of the departments are encouraged to make use of the three. Either of uh, either one of the three, so as to um, make better use of resources. Different departments uh, will decide according to the maturity of their systems. They will also consider um, the um, their overall plan. They will um, launch um, the uh, cloud. Uh, they will launch a cloud platform. And we are consider we are considering uh, or rather we ask the departments um, to transfer their platform to the private cloud or the public cloud. 
Do you ask departments to consider it on their own, or do you do any coordination among the 150-odd pro projects? How many will be put into the cloud platform? We have a uh, two-way uh, communication. Um, we also take the initiative to consider mature systems that can be um, launched onto the cloud platform. Maybe the deputy uh, commissioner can speak on the actual numbers. Um, chairman, at least 20 uh, projects will be using cloud technology um, among the 150 or so. But I believe that more will uh, adopt cloud technology. So will more information be given to us in the future which 20 uh, uh, will use the cloud technology and then which uh, will be uh, subsequently uh, put on the cloud? or? What will be the increase in efficiency and the decrease in cost? Will information be provided? Uh, I can provide the information on the 20-odd items, uh, which plan to make use of cloud technology. Okay, please provide information after the meeting. Yes, um, I still have a, a question on not meeting the target. Now, when bidding for a tender, some big companies may bid with very low prices in order to get the projects. Concerning putting in bids at very low prices, will that uh, cause uh, the inability to meet targets? Well, in fact, uh, they cannot put in uh, extremely low bids to get a contract. There's a matter of cost. Uh, they are for profit. They are organizations for profit. They should not just uh, grab a, a um, contract uh, to make a loss. And we need to stress uh, that they need to fulfill the technical conditions before price is considered, before we consider whether the price is competitive or not. The majority of the contractors are able to deliver. Just some uh, have uh, delay uh, in certain parts. Well, to be rational, uh, no one want to do a business that makes any laws. But some may have a strategy. They want to get a uh, t uh, contract first with a low price, and then they will subcontract. Um, the project so that only the subcontractors stand to lose instead of they, the, 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 con the main contractor. What do you think? We do not allow subcontracting. Now, when they uh, contract out some of their work, they can uh, that only account for about thirteen percent. Uh, in terms of the work low or 14 percent of uh, the amount of money. So they m do the work themselves mainly. Uh, Mr. Ho, I have a question for uh, on mobile apps first. What are the criteria for um, letting the Mobile uh, for uh, the, the uh, bureaus or the departments to uh, launch their mobile apps. Now, do they um, do it out of their own initiative and then seek your support? Now, you say uh, you have limited, mem uh, very uh, limited manpower. Then, how do you rank the priority of the um, mobile apps of the law, uh, the, the uh, bureaus and departments? Now, some. Uh, private companies, private sector companies, say for example those who operate uh, airport uh, bus, they have a good system, uh, a mobile app, which can tell you when uh, the bus is coming, how much time the, the next bus is um, needed um, to come to your bus stop. Now that's very useful, especially for those who are going to the airport. Or well, the administration launch a mobile app to release information, timely information on traffic congestion, railway problems, emergency traffic arrangement, 
uh, which is very useful information. Now there is news broadcast through the radio, but if you are in the street, you may not be able to hear that. So it's, uh, the best thing is that you get the mobile app, and then uh, you can search the information. It's very, it's very convenient. Would the administration consider developing a mobile app to handle such a, uh, an emergency situation? The GCIO, in terms of division of labor, the departments will comply with our guidelines and make suggestions on mobile apps they want to launch. They will follow our guidelines, but they make the initiative to do that. And they will set out the target groups and the nature of service in respect of the mobile app. We'll also ask the departments to release their data um, on our open information platform. We hope public sector firms and private sector firms can make use of the data and uh, combine them with other information to develop new mobile apps for our citizens. The one you mentioned um, is already uh, done by some, some firms outside the government. Now, uh, according to their reply, it is for the bureaus to make the proposal. So do they make use of their resources to launch the mobile apps, or do they need your support? Do they get your, uh, try to get your support? And then what is your priority? Well, uh, they apply for uh, funds, and then uh, they give us our proposal, and then we'll put it in the head under the head uh, 710, and then we submit to the ledge code to get the block allocation or block grant. As for the approval of each item, the OGCIO looks at each and every item, looks at uh, the details and objectives, and also uh, implementation. So we assist the department to do that. So um, if the, de well, the uh, when the departments or bureaus make proposals to you, they don't need to queue up. As long as they propose, then you'll bring the proposal to the let's go, right? If it is between $200,000 to $10 million, we will incorporate this under 710, 710. As for whether a project will be approved and how much will be approved, we will talk to the uh, department or bureau one by one. I want to ask, what are the factors for your consideration? Whether the project is worth doing? What are the factors to decide it is worth doing? Well, um, we have to look at the manpower, the budget, and also uh, whether the um, mobile app will facilitate the provision of government service to the recipients. We need to consider various factors. Well, uh, this item uh, is scheduled to end at a quarter past three. Uh, I will allow Mr. Leung Kwok Hong to ask his uh, first uh, round of questions, but um, I will not allow second round. Mr. Leung Kwok Hong. <coughs> yes, please speak into the microphone. <coughs> now, concerning mobile apps and public information, you have new examples. One, two, and three. These are examples. What are the others? Or you only four. You only have four, and you mentioned three here. What is the uh, percentage? Is it a hundred uh, three percent out of hundred? Uh, page five. Hello. Uh, you've cited three examples. Mr. Leung is asking whether you only have three such examples, or 
uh, uh, how much do these user-friendly electronic services constitute, uh, you know, in percentage terms, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, how much do they account for the total? So regarding lab apps and so on, there are 11 and 10. So it w 59 to enhance internal uh, operation 13 is about upgrade of technology and 42 it's to further enhance the uh, information security i think if you have put it in the paper already uh, in the first hand then uh, uh, first place i would wouldn't have to ask the question well you have guidelines and people follow your guidelines and also uh, work on these projects in the light of the actual circumstances well i haven't read your guidelines perhaps I'm lazy or I haven't I, I don't know where to find those guidelines could you provide me with such guidelines and secondly could you tell us which department has told you well you've cited so many examples in your paper uh, about public information and mobile apps Let's say uh, an app involving whether you may say you estimate that about one million people use the service. Please give us such details. You always say that the department may have many, you know, uh, clients or users. Well, the observatory has many, many users, so I don't understand. If there are very few users, why should you support such projects? Well, you approve of a project when the estimated number of users are small, or if a department, you know, estimate there is a large number of users, it turns out that the number is much smaller, and then the the audit uh, would uh, monitor them. And you say that the for the observatory, there are many users. The other departments, there are very very, very few users. If there are very few users, you shouldn't you know, do it in the first place. So do you have the figures? You gave us figures like 10, 11, 59, 31, 42. Actually, in paragraph 3 of the paper, we have already laid down the uh, the uh, criteria um, the de determining whether or not we would support those, uh, approve those projects. For example, whether they support e-government strategies and so on. Okay, I don't think we need to waste time. I've read those uh, criteria. Our question is that there are some services which nobody would use. Why is it that we have projects for which we have approved funding and, and, and in the end it turned out to be a waste of money? I think for projects with many users like the observatory, of course you can approve them. But is it the case that there are some departments who would propose projects for which there are very few users and you would still approve them? Uh, could you tell us why? Understand. I think as far as government services are concerned, I don't think they would uh, look after every member of the public. Some services are, would cater for some people. Let's say one department say we want to develop an app. For, we expect there will be 50,000 users. In the end, there are only 500 users. They say they... If I tell you that uh, I estimate the number of users will be 500, it turns out that there are 500, then, it, then it's all right. If a department estimate there will be 50,000 users, in the end there are only 500, then if you go to paragraph 5 of our paper, we have explained that this department may not be able to uh, satisfy our criteria. And say last year, for example, there were five projects which didn't, you know, achieve the expected efficiencies and then uh, they would need to, uh, you know, provide us with a uh, post-implementation departmental return. Okay, I think with that we can wrap up our... So, uh, before we wrap up... Uh, uh, I'll ask members whether or not we support the government's proposal. I don't see any objection. Okay. Next item is 
Review of license conditions in carrier licenses. First of all, I'd like to welcome the officials attending our discussion on this item. Now, who would like to walk us through the, the paper? Permanent Secretary, Madam Chair and Members. The Community Authority issues licenses to regulate the licensees, but with the but there are some provisions in the ordinances. Uh, I think because of the overlap of services, sometimes the licenses are subject to double regulation. We have therefore reviewed licensing conditions and consider whether or not we need to scrap some of the provisions which actually uh, uh, actually duplicate each other uh, or have been superseded. And the Commission Authority has uh, 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 put forward proposals and the and, con and conducted a public consultation. We received a total of eleven submissions, seven from the telecom carriers and four from government departments. The network operators and the operators support the proposals in the licensing uh, in the consultation paper. Having considered the uh, the submissions carefully, uh, in Mar on March 10 this year, we issued a joint statement with the Commission Authority. They have scrapped the provision of uh, limiting the uh, licensees uh, for the, they've actually uh, scrapped uh, the general condition number 10 regarding attachments in buildings and trees and also uh, they have responded to the proposals uh, received and the joint declaration joint statement is uh, in annex 2 and there are also special conditions regarding road opening. Uh, for this, we don't need to amend the ordinance. In respect of general condition number 10, uh, I think we will need to uh, amend the schedules. Paragraph 9 to 12 explains uh, the scrapping of general condition number 10. That is the uh, rationale for restricting uh, uh, the, uh, attachments uh, uh, to buildings and trees. The forestry and ordinance already have regulations, so therefore there is no need to require the telecom carriers to require additional permission. We therefore propose to amend the substituted legislation so that the condition will be scrapped after the legislative process is completed. And we hope the members will support our proposed amendments. Mr. Lai Kwong. Madam Chair. I have two questions in respect of this proposal. First of all, we have seen recently uh, a lot of public concern about uh, you know broadband access to the rural areas, uh, uh, and early on it has been reported in the news that uh, uh, this has been reported in, in the media. So after you have scrapped these special conditions. I'd like to know whether there will be any impact uh, in, in, in this regard. And secondly, the question may not be directly relevant, but I'd like to know. Anyway, I have received many requests from the telecom carriers saying that when they, you know, uh, dig up the ground, uh, they will be punished for the uh, damages cost. And according to the existing ordinance, uh, they are... I think like other public utilities, when damages are done in the course of road excavation, there will be uh, you know, more serious uh, uh, penalties, but not so in the case of the telecom carriers. There are very often breaches, and therefore in the course of road digging, road opening works, uh, they can only recover the cost, but the the it doesn't you know the 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 penalty doesn't have any deterrent effect and a lot of inconvenience is caused to the public. So while you are amending the ordinance, can you also you know rectify this problem? Thank you. Regarding the access of uh, broadband uh, access to the villages or rural areas, 
I don't think it is directly related to the proposed amendment here. If members are interested in the five uh, condition amendments to the uh, provisions regarding road opening works, our colleagues will be happy to explain further later on. Mr. Mock also asked about the road opening works by uh, you know uh, by uh, you know the telecom carriers and their networks being damaged according to uh, clause 18 of the uh, telecommunication ordinance uh, our protection is is already provided provided for and that would be in uh, conversation rather than sanctions in the past we have talked to the telecom carriers and discussed this subject we believe that at this time, if we were to amend uh, uh, condition number 18, we cannot do so this time. But we've said in the paper that going forward, we will have a comprehensive review of the communication ordinance and the broadcasting ordinance. And uh, during that review, we will consider this issue. Uh, we will look. Uh, have to consider whether or not the telecom infrastructure is like other public utilities like gas or water and so on and be treated the same. We're not, we've not been able to do, do it this time. Now, the regarding the five uh, uh, criteria, our colleagues from the uh, CA could uh, explain further. Well, the five provisions are in respect of the uh, telecom operators uh, conducting road opening works for which they would need to obtain uh, written permission by the highways department or the uh, lands department before they start such works they need to obtain consent from the uh, you know highways department and when they really need to open up the roads they would need to obtain a road excavation permit published uh, issued by the highways department if they uh, conduct any works they should not cause interference to other facilities, and if they sh make any changes, if certain public utilities would need to be moved, then they would need to to to, to work uh, uh, in tandem with those uh, operators. Chairman, just want to add one point. If you say telecom communication is not a basic service, I don't think many people would agree. Saying that they are not, uh, you know, uh, as important as the other utilities. Uh, I think we've been waiting for the amendments for a long time. You need to create new posts and conduct public consultation. It will take a few years. It's too slow. Uh, we also agree that telecom, uh, you know, facilities are, are, are like the as important as the other public utilities. Yes, I think we can have a discussion. Chen Chi Chin. Thank you. I also like to follow up on this point. Early on, the media had reported that the fixed network uh, company, uh, uh, the MTRC, has violated the the uh, the, the rules and uh, lay broadband uh, cables and leased them. They have, you know, illegally occupied, you know, f you know, fifty kilometers of you know government land. Uh, and they're making a huge profit. So when we discuss the proposal to scrap the general condition regarding the attachments to buildings and trees and carrying on road opening works in, in, in government land, now we don't have the amendment yet. Well, does it mean that they are now in breach of the law? And after the amendment, does it mean that they, what they do will no longer be illegal? In paragraph A, we understand that scrapping the, the special condition for road, regarding road opening will be, uh, you know, the responsibility of the CA, and there is no need for legislation. Why is that? Is it the case that it's for uh, for the you know CA to decide whether or not to 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 to, to hold somebody accountable? My my question, uh, my understanding is that the uh, case cited by Mr. Chen. I think the Lens Department is now conducting investigation. The present amendment may not have a direct bearing uh, on that case. The present, the proposed amendment will not affect uh, that particular, you know, case in question. I saw the As for this, uh, the, um, the uh, reference to the case, the CA is now obtaining information from 
the relevant authorities and to understand uh, the nature of the complaint. As for the um, second question, there is no need to go through the legislative process. Now, there are two kinds. Under the licensing uh, arrangement, there are general conditions and specific conditions. Specific conditions can be amended by the CA. The general conditions have to be amended by subsidiary legislation. That's a requirement of the law. As for the five specific conditions, they can be amended by the CA, and they've already uh, amended them and have already implemented them. We are now seeking your uh, support for amending the subsidiary legislation. They have two different uh, requirements. Can you provide me with more information? Now, you say there is no need to go through legislative process. Now, can you uh, give the, those provisions for our reference? You can give us after the meeting. Okay, please, give us give them to us after the meeting. Mr. Tim Yuchong. Chairman, I have an example. I don't know whether the um, excavation provision can help in Tianmen. There is a uh, bus stop, a cover for a, um, a bus shelter. Now, when you do a bus shelter, you need to dig up the ground and then put up the pillars underground. Um, there are communication tables, uh, communication cables. Of course, there are other utilities underground. The departments have all agreed um, to provide some shelter. Uh, the utilities agreed to be relocated except a single telecommunications company. The telecommunication company said that it has no obligation to relocate the cable. Now, with the change of the law, uh, can you help us with this case? Maybe the CA can explain. It's irrelevant, uh, but um, there may be a way to help. According to understanding, um, if the um, telecommunication operators are allowed to excavate um, the road and then lay down the cables and lay the cables. Uh, there is a license given, and the uh, director of lands can uh, ask the operator to divert their facilities. They have a public service license. They should cooperate. We are not the authority. We cannot be sure whether the uh, Lands Department has already um, issued uh, a request to the telecommunication operator to relocate the cable. I don't know how the Lands Department gave the permission. Uh, according to your explanation, uh, they need to relocate. Say I want to build a bus shelter, uh, they should accommodate. If they don't accommodate, then how can you um, require them to do so? They don't want to relocate because uh, it moves costs. Can the lens department require them to move? Say, if they don't cooperate, then what? But a bus shelter is not a public um, utility. Well, if you can't answer the question, maybe. Uh, I mean, if they don't accommodate, the telecommunication operator doesn't accommodate. Can you uh, have some ways to uh, require them to uh, cooperate? We don't have the actual information. Let us look into that. I think the permit uh, should have been issued by the Lens Department, and there are certain provisions binding on the operator. We will look into that, and then we'll give you a written reply. The members of the questions, Mr. Long Kwok Hong, and then Mr. Ho. I also want to follow the question asked by Mr. Uh, Ray Chan. The uh, MTLCL um, dug up the ground and laid cables without permission, and it made a lot of money. They laid uh, optical cables. It's a private business. Who is looking after that? 
which department is looking after that? It should be the lens department. The lens department has a, a, a piece of legislation to deal with that. So you can't uh, regulate them. Now, let us take uh, Mr. Tam Yu Chung's question example. Is a bus stop a public um, infrastructure? If that is the case, if a, a, a public facility or public in infrastructure, I guess not uh, because it belongs to the, pub, uh, the the bus company. Well, let us look into that. Concerning a bus stop, I'm not familiar with that. I will try to understand it and I'll give you a written answer. I still have one more question. Concerning penalty. <laughs> Say, uh, damaging the cables. I think you really need to change the law. Um, telecommunication is very important. If you look at um, people in the MTR trains, you see everybody is holding a, a smartphone, looking at their smartphones. Now you come to uh, sell the ITB uh, to us. I um, tried to block it. Now uh, they're able to get through. Now, as for this one, um, can you be quick in uh, proposing a change of law? We will not uh, filibuster. I've already said that we need to look into the policy. We do our best. We are all here, uh, 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 except those who have not spoken. We are very concerned about it. Now we have um, gone a long way. From the olden days, the um, telecommunication is a public facility, and you need to protect it. If someone destroys the telecommunication system, then it's re very serious. Well, they just um, um, say uh, damage your cable, and then uh, they uh, pay you. They pay you. Just uh, they just compensate you. Say I am doing telecommunication business, and then I take up the ground. I damage your cables. Then I can uh, do my own business. I, I can take away your business. <laughs> you really need to. So I just damage your your cables, and um, you have no business. It's not that there is no penalty. Is that if you have damaged the cables, then you will have to pay compensation. Say if one company has done uh, this thing, then its reputation will be seriously undermined. And when we receive um, suggestions uh, from the uh, um, telecommunications operators, their complaints. Um, Mainly uh, because of the uh, cables being damaged by other people who are doing road works. Miss Hall, I want to ask the uh, permanent secretary with regard to the amendments that is in relation to uh, road excavation and also attachment to buildings and trees. You also have other general conditions. I want to ask um, with regard to amendments to the conditions. Do you go straight to amend the provisions, or you set out just general criteria, as you have set out in paragraph five? There are altogether four criteria. Now there are hundreds of. Ordinances in Hong Kong. I don't know whether you have uh, studied all the uh, ordinances. If you do not adopt a general uh, principle approach, then in the future there may be other ordinances which come under the 
uh, principles of paragraph 5, then uh, you will be um, in, tr uh, in a mess. Now, we are trying to amend the licensing conditions. Certain licensing conditions can only be achieved through amending the law, or amending the regulation, rather. At the deputy secretary. Now, we are now going to remove general condition 10. It is in a piece of in a regulation under the telecommunications ordinance. The four principles or uh, four criteria are the criteria we have adopted in assessing the conditions, whether they should be kept or should be changed. And after a review, we came to the conclusion that we should take away condition 10, GC10. And in taking away GC10, we need to, in order to take away GC10, we need to amend the regulation. It is, there should be a simple, or rather it is a simple act, and that is to take away GC10 from the regulation. We don't need to um, deal with the criteria. The criteria in paragraph 5 are the criteria adopted by the um, Bureau in respect of assessing the conditions. They will not be put into the law. Correct. All right. If we have finished with this item on the agenda, we'll move on to agenda item number six. Chairman, if I may answer Mr. Chen's question concerning uh, the five SCs which do not need the change of the law. In the telecommunications ordinance, or rather in the communications ordinance, uh, under uh, Section 7A, the CA, uh, has the power to uh, issue specified conditions for licenses. This is 7A. The issue before us is general condition 10, which can only be changed uh, through the uh, subsidiary legislation. And that is also according to Section 7 of the Communications Ordinance. It spells out very clearly that we need to amend the GCs through regulations. All right, we move on to agenda item number six. That is review of certain, um, and that is the uh, proposed creation of two supernumerary directory posts in the communications and technology branch of the CEDB, the secretary, the permanent secretary, uh, to keep pace with the uh, changes in broadcasting and telecommunication and also development technology, we decided uh, a two-stage approach to uh, rearrange the supervisory structure and we'll also review the overall regulatory regime and legislation. We set up uh, the CA on the 1st of April 2012 to be the unified regulator for broadcasting and telecommunications. With the setting up of the CA, the powers and functions of the former TA and BA have been taken over according to the law. Um, we will continue to review the uh, TO and BO and relevant um, laws so as to keep pace of changes of the times and uh, um, to deal uh, uh, with regard to the um, The need uh, to conduct a review will set up a star AO staff grade C and AO staff grade B posts, and also for um, non directorate uh, supernumerary posts. They are to conduct a relevant uh, review of the laws. Um, in the um, in the um, as far as the, the division of labor. In reviewing the uh, TO and uh, BO, uh, there will be heavy workload. And um, amending the regulatory structure will also have an important bearing on the development of telecommunication and broadcasting industries. We need the involvement of the uh, stakeholders and also the public at large. We also need to work with the D of J and other government departments. And we will also have to come back to this panel and also the LegCo to make um, legislative proposals. 
um, in view of the complexity of the review and the workload arising from the review, we have the view that the present manpower cannot cope with the increase in workload. We need to set up a task force uh, or rather a specific team, a review team, to conduct a review of the two ordinances and this will not, uh, <coughs> should not undermine the work ongoing work of the Bureau. We hope members will support the proposal with support. Then in December, we will we'll make our proposal to the ESC and then afterwards we'll go to the FC. Uh, with the permission of the FC, we will immediately start working. Um, the team will set up a review timetable and also the scope of work. Thank you. Mao Lai Gong. Mao Lai Gong. Four minutes. Chairman, Madam Chair. I think it is very difficult for us to <coughs> venture on uh, innovative projects. We've been talking about this for 10 years. E even if you created the, 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 the post in October, the, I think in March 2006 was the time when we started this consultation. And then uh, p probably by 2016 when you're able to create this post, well, the, the ordinances uh, would, you, 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 you're creating this post just to look at the possibility of amending the ordinance and that would take another two years. The C has been set up for three and a half years. Originally you proposed that you would first merge uh, and then you would amend the legislation and then there was another delay of three or four years. I think the biggest issue now, as many members would probably ask, the same question, that is with the creation of the ITB, uh, would, would the, uh, I mean with the creation of a new bureau do you still need to create these six uh, additional posts and I think ma many members will have the same question. I don't want to argue with you over that so that we have to wait for another few years yet and I, uh, otherwise I don't know what to do. With many the the, the uh, telecom and broadcasting ordinances. There are many the areas where you need coordination, such as uh, uh, consumer protection, ownership, licensing procedure. On the one hand, the C in council makes a decision. In the in, as for the other ordinance, is not necessary. Also, the question of spectrum and road uh, opening works. They are all they all have to do with this ordinance. And people in, in railway state radio stations have also asked me the question about political advertisement. Uh, do we have to wait for the amendment of uh, uh constitution the amendment of the, the of the ordinance? I may not uh, support the proposed uh, the amendment to this ordinance, but I, we, we insert, uh, for some people would like this to be changed. The radio stations will, will welcome the amendment. So will this be part of the future consultation and would it fall within the scope of possible uh, legislative amendments? Uh, in the review of the two ordinances, uh, it, indeed it has taken a long time. It's not true that we have not done anything work so far. And uh, we always would look at the development in the in the in the private market. But if we were to sit down and to merge the two ordinances, at the policy level, the ordinances reflect the policies. We need to first reflect on the policies. Uh, to do that, I don't think we can uh, do it well uh, because we do not have enough manpower to do it expeditiously and in a focused manner, and to. We're not proposing to create uh, six permanent posts. We are only all proposing to create these posts for three years, so that all the basic work will have been done. And if need be, then we could extend that. But how about the staff? Does it have to do with the establishment of the ITP? No, the, 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 these are new posts for a new bureau. All along, my uh, you know, uh, Under Secretary and my colleagues are working on, on the routine work relating to broadcasting and telecommunication. But here we're talking about a review of the legislation and also the need to conduct a, an extensive public consultation. And the resources required are huge. Without such resources, if you ask whether I can do it, maybe I can, but I will not uh, be able to commit how long it will take. I can only tell you we I don't know how long. What about political advertisements on radios and, and TV st uh, stations? No, it will not be part of that consultation. Well, I think political advertisements have nothing to do with the current uh, review. 
No, it's not governed by the current uh, telecom and broadcasting ordinance. The broadcasting ordinance is a very broad ordinance. Political attachment, political advertisement may be part of that, but uh, in the present amendment, we're not touching on that. But why you include role opening work but not political advertisements? Uh, how would you decide which will be included and which will not be covered? Uh, and what, what would be your rationale? I think political advertisement is not a priority issue for our Bureau to resolve. So it's not a priority item, but you can also cover that as well. Certainly, if members have any views, we will listen to you. But when we need we'll consider the amendment of the ordinance, we do not think that this is uh, urgent. Uh, we are now proposing to deal with other issues which are very important, such as cross-media ownership and so on, which I believe are more urgent matters. Uh, Madam Chair, I don't want to, you know, take up other members' time, but I think in the existing ordinance, the, you already have some preconceived uh, position regarding what you will do or what you will not. Then, in in this case, could you tell us what uh, what are your priorities? Give us your uh, when the team is set up. Of course, uh, the team will report to members of, on its work periodically. But regarding the priority items, when the C was set up and when the legislation was enacted, the secretary already explained which are the areas that we will focus this special attention on, including cross media ownership. Which we will look at, you know, on a priority basis. Lung Kwa Hong. We're talking about the Mr. Lung Kwa Hong. Please speak in the microphone. Are we talking about the proposed creation of two supernumerary directorate posts in the communication and technology branch of the CEDB? Yes. Well, we now already have a new bureau, the ITB. So, which bureau is this branch now under? Chairman, at the opening, I already said that after the new bureau has been set up, I think the name of the branch will be changed. It will become a communication and innovation branch, and the technology branch has been moved. But the uh, communication and technology branch will still be under the uh, CDB. So in future, it will be named Telecommunication and Innovation Branch. So the name of the branch has been changed. Well, I think you have to tell us. Well, the technology branch, I, I can pretend that I understand, even if I don't. But what is, you know, innovative property? Mr. Leung, I don't think it is the, this agenda item for us to discuss, you know, innovative, uh, you know, uh, industries. I'm not digressing, Madam Chair. I think the two supernumerate director posts are about the uh, telecommunication and also the broadcasting ordinance. It has nothing to do with the creative, in creative industries. We can certainly discuss that, you know, uh, on a different occasion. Where creative ministries has all along been un, uh, under the remit of the CEDB before the new bureau was set up, but in, previously we have undertaken to review the two legislation, and with the current uh, establishment, we are not we will not be able to effectively and expeditiously conduct that review, and therefore we are proposing to create a short-term three-year supernumerary post. Well, you've changed the name to uh, Creative Industry Branch. What does that branch do? You must understand. What I want to know is that once you have set up the new bureau, the name of the branch is also changed. But would the, the branch, this branch, will be doing the same thing or not? Do you understand my point, Chair, ma Madam? Ch uh, our work in respect of communication and creative industries will stay the same, except that the technology part has been, uh, you know, uh, taken out. Today, we're talking about a review of two ordinances. We've all along been working on creative industries. Every year, we will come back to the panel to update you about our movie industry and so on and so on. Let's cut this short. 
before this change, uh, uh, when where does the uh, Creative Ministry branch belong? It is still within the Communication and Technology branch, except that we, in the past we did not particularly highlight this Creative Ministry branch. Emily Lau. Madam Chair, I agree with Mr. Charles Mock that the Telecom and Broadcasting Ordinance, we've been working on this for 10 years already. Uh, I think eventually we will be, you know, the slowest. Uh, they told us that they've not, it's not true that they've not done anything over the last 10 years. This is such an important matter. We've asked you to review it, and now you've wait, taken so long and you're proposing to create new posts. Mr. Mark made a very reasonable request. You've told us that you've done some work over the last 10 years. You should have already have some ideas. You shouldn't be starting from scratch and ask us to allow you to create these new posts before we start doing anything. Uh, uh, you sometimes you criticize people for filibustering. But over the last 10 years, nobody has filibustered over this subject. Nobody has stood in their way. So I asked the administration, have you been so busy in the last 10 years? If you had been so busy, why didn't you come earlier to tell us that you are short on manpower and, and ask for a review? Why is that the case? But I think that uh, I, I think this is exactly the reason why so many members of the public are so angry. Well, the uh, the uh, bureau was set up for the ten year. The CA was set up in uh, in 2012 after the legislation was enacted, and since 20, 2012, it's not that. Uh, we have not done anything and wasted the time. Other than conducting research and collecting information and data, we've seen that the CA in its operation has seen that in terms of uh, uh, the allocation of spectrum and so on, or what technical issues they have encountered and how our policy can work better with them. In the future review, that will help uh, make our review going forward easier. I'm talking about the three-year post, and since the establishment of the CA, it's been three years also. Well, three years is not a short time either. Whether it's three or ten years, if during this time you have done something, you have conducted some studies, you believe that the creation uh, that these three new posts could should be retained late afterwards, then you could you give us a paper? Tell us that you've done a lot of work already and that uh, that you need more manpower to promote this? Or is it that you, you, you don't have anything to tell us? I will try my best to uh, uh, provide as much de details as I can in my paper uh, to the PwC. Well, you can't get blood out of stone. Well, I think you've been talking about this for such a long time. You should have some ideas already. Please give us as much details as you can. What have you studied so far? What are the possible solutions? Don't wait until the posts have been created. Otherwise, we might have to wait for another 10 years. Uh, Permanent Secretary, you note that members are very concerned as to how we can better enact these le uh, le legislation. I'm sure you've done some work already. Please give us as much information as possible so that we can approve these polls and the review can go ahead as soon as possible. Mr. Raymond Chair, I support the, 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 I agree the government should review these two pieces of ordin ordinances as soon as possible because they're update, outdated and they're out of date. Uh, out of touch with uh, com communication and telecommunication. We are now talking about the proposal to hire additional staff. The Permanent Secretary, I think the reason why we set up the ITB is because we can take out the, the portfolio for technology. Right now, your workload is reduced. You don't need to uh, oversee the work of the, uh, you know, uh, you know, create Hong Kong. So, in for your in reality the, the workload has been reduced which means that you now have more manpower resources in theory compared with before so you have to tell the public with the extra uh, manpower resources release how you're going to use them you should make good use of the uh, 
manpower which is being released before you consider creating new posts. I understand that uh, in the past you 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 have a heavy workload now that uh, part of your portfolio is taken out of your bureau. Uh, you you may have to convince us why you st your workload is still very heavy. Now, a simple answer is this: before the setting up of a new a new bureau. Those dealing with technology, uh, the colleagues who are dealing with technology, um, well, the only I deal with uh, technology. My colleagues deal with creative industry and communications. I work with the two directors. If um, the um, manpower that has been saved after the hiving out of um, uh, innovation and technology is that I have more time. Now, in the past few years, I spent uh, quite a lot of time on innovation and technology. Now, I will have more time to invest into communications and technology. Into, uh, can you tell us the uh, targets and timetable? Are you able to meet your targets? How soon uh, will you get uh, to your target? It's hard to uh, say that at present. I hope that, say, in the middle of next year, we'll have some uh, uh, basic general consultation. Um, we will do it in stages. Uh, we will put the important issues first uh, to do the consultation. A team uh, can work on this and catch up. Uh, there will be a consultation in the middle of next year. If we can create our polls early next year, there will be a consultation. Depending on the outcome, I will amend the law. Will you uh, do the uh, BO first or TO first? Well, the two will go in tandem. Since we are discussing cross-media ownership, approval, appeal mechanism, um, the two ordinances uh, are involved. Well, instead of looking at a particular ordinance, we look at issues, uh, how we deal with the issues, how we deal with it here, how, we, how other jurisdictions deal with that. If there aren't, well, Ms. Emily Lau. Now, the two issues are big issues and they are controversial. I hope the administration will consult the LegCo as early as possible, listen widely, and listen widely. It will be helpful. Please don't just uh, drop your plan behind closed doors. You work very hard, and then you come up with a proposal, and then everybody's against it. It's a waste of time. Please talk to your own colleagues. You need a framework. You need something. You, uh, but you better consult the LegCo early so that we can give you our views. You have been dragging your feet for so many years, and we, we're really furious. Yes, uh, Secretary, please deal with it ASAP. Any further questions? If not, then I've heard uh, that um, the panel agrees uh, with the administration's proposal to submit uh, these proposals to the ESC and the FC. So be it, then, if there is no objection. AOB. Any other things on the AOB? If not, then meeting adjourned. There is the next meeting, 14th of December. Thank you.